In the UK, nearly 400 million plates of fish and chips are eaten every year. This crispy, salty, flaky dish has become a beloved comfort food. And while the most affordable versions of fish and chips are typically made with pollock or haddock, the premium stuff is made with Atlantic cod. But be warned, it's not cheap. So what does the story of Atlantic cod have to do with indigenous peoples? Vikings, Basques, and slavery? It's a slippery tale, so watch till the end to learn all about this strange fishery. I mean, history. Cod has long been a popular fish for cooking because of its versatility and abundance. Its meaty, flaky texture and mild flavor allow it to complement an array of seasonings, ingredients, and side dishes. It's used in many different cultures. Plus, it's pretty healthy for you. It's rich in vitamin D, and its liver is packed with omega-3 fatty acids. But not all cod is created equal. There's Pacific cod, Pollock, Haddock, and Atlantic cod. Atlantic cod prefer the frigid waters of the North Atlantic Ocean. They used to be found from North Carolina all the way up to the Barents Sea on the northern coast of Norway. Indigenous peoples of Canada and America were the first to eat this once plentiful fish. They also used its bones to make fishing hooks, ironic, weapons, and other artifacts. It's safe to say the Atlantic cod was a very important fish. But indigenous peoples weren't the only ones with a love for Atlantic cod. Vikings devoured it too. As early as the 8th century, Vikings had created dried salted cod, or stockfish, which is essentially cod jerky. This preserved the cod so it could sustain the Vikings during their long ocean voyages. The Viking salted cod eventually spread throughout southern Europe and beyond, becoming a market staple. Basque traders from the mountains of southwest France and northwest Spain not only embraced salted cod, but found a way to commercialize it. They set up summertime cod fishing settlements in the New World, or Canada's East Coast, selling their hauls in Europe. They were among the first to accomplish this. Salted cod also gained popularity in Portugal, where it was referred to as bacalhau, the Portuguese word for cod. It was so significant to their food culture that Portugal named it their national dish. Three popular preparations of bacalhau are stewing it with cream and potatoes, baking it into balls, or cooking it into a casserole with eggs, olives, and onions. I'll take all three. Back in the New World, Americans took notice of the Basque's success in exporting cod to Europe, so they set up their own market. The chips started stacking, and I don't mean french fries, although I wish I did. Little did they know that the Atlantic cod would become the most important fishery in American history. Yeah, you heard me right. This lunker helped the colonies become financially independent from the British crown, forming the foundation of the American Revolution. Unfortunately, as with almost all stories in history, there's a dark side to Atlantic cod as well. Unbeknownst to the innocent cod, it contributed to keeping the atrocities of slavery alive. Cotton, tobacco, and sugar plantation owners needed a cheap and steady food source to feed their laborers. The answer was cod, which was affordable and abundant at the time. Not only did it sustain America's growing slave labor force, it also kept them fed during the long, arduous journeys from Africa to the New World. Now, Atlantic cod is neither cheap nor abundant. According to the Fish Price Setting Panel, the cost of grade A cod increased by 10% from spring to fall of 2021. So how did this cheap, plentiful food source become so expensive? Overfishing. By the 1970s, the Atlantic cod supply was almost fully depleted. Atlantic cod commonly measures in at around 2.7 to 5.4 kilograms, but at their largest, they can be as long as 1.8 meters and weigh 96 kilograms. 
Unfortunately, these larger cod are becoming increasingly rare. This is due to an evolutionary adjustment that combats overfishing, as smaller cod are able to escape fishing nets. So, don't grow big if you want to escape becoming someone's dinner. Over the last 40 years, Atlantic cod populations continued to dwindle. However, a 10-year repopulation plan began in 2014 that hopes to return the Atlantic cod to their once abundant numbers by 2024. If you think cod is expensive, what are your thoughts on a $25,000 ice cream sundae? Let us know in the comments and learn all about what makes this extravagant frozen treat so costly on another episode of Origins of Food.